Hello, Unity Hall. Hello, New York State. I'm Cozy Sheridan. This is Charlie Coke, and we are going to sing you some songs we wrote. Put away all of your angry. Put away all of your sad. Put away all of the winter. The dream you had. Take out this little seed, the hope that we all need. I will love you to the moon, to the moon on the mornings when you're feeling old. All the warnings you were ever told, they seem to be coming true. To the moon when you can't remember how or why love might hang. And put away all your receipts What you owe and what you'll keep How you plan to survive When the drop is sudden and steep Let the afternoon come And maybe not get anything done I will love you to the moon To the moon on the mornings when you're feeling old All the warm seem to be coming true to the moon when you can't remember how or why love might hang in your sky Sing with all the space inside, let it fall out, don't even try for the back of the room, or the notes way up high, and let it vibrate in your chest, maybe this song will help you rest, I will love you to the moon, to the moon on the mornings when you're feeling old, all the warnings you were ever told. Seem to be coming true to the moon when you can't remember how or why love might hang in your sky. Well, we are glad to be with you, as I said. Uh, we live outside the Boston area. Uh, Charlie is from the Boston area. I grew up in New Hampshire, but my family is from New York State. My mom was from Potsdam. My dad is from Syracuse. So, and I think I still have some cousins in Syracuse. And I had a great aunt who lived in Utica. I even dated a guy from Utica. So, I, uh, I have a lot of New York State. New York State good memories. This is a song that I wrote uh, years ago when I lived in Moab, Utah. I spent about 20 years out there living with another songwriter named T.R. Ritchie. And at the time that I was writing this, and I believe actually, Charlie, that the chorus, the melody on the chorus is a Charlie co-write. Um, you can always tell the Charlie songs that are, they have this sort of magic chord in them somewhere. So I wrote this song about my partner who at the time was ill. He, um, he had written a poem. He knew he was on his last days on earth. And he wrote a poem about wanting to come back as a raven. And in Moab, the ravens are awesome. The ravens are the size of a Volkswagen bug. You can see them up at the park or where you go walking, and they're just, they have these beautiful watery calls. And uh, so I wrote this as sort of a, uh, I don't know, a goodbye to him. This is called Pretty Bird.
this in September and by that time we will have moved uh, yeah. to uh, back to New Hampshire um, we're so glad to be the opening part of your concert series and I'm so honored that Matt asked us to do this uh, Matt is actually a friend of my former Utica New York boyfriend so uh, that's sort of how this you know these things they say that after you've been in the arts for 25 years you have enough context that you can uh, survive and having been in it for much longer than that now hmm. This is a song we wrote about the driveway that's right out our window. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but um, the, the whole isolation and pandemic has been very hard. Uh, and, and some nights I just can't, I can't cope and I need some way to get through those moments I can't cope. And one night, what I did is I just walked out the door and I lay down on the driveway. Last night after dinner, I walked outside, I lay down on the driveway, and looked up at the sky. I lay down to give up, I lay down to say no, I wanted to escape driveway would not let go I have a mind that thinks with time the answer can be found the driveway offered no solution it offered the ground it'd be hard to pin down what I looked up there to find Have you been lying in your driveway Searching for relief of some kind? When I lay there long enough To hold what I was feeling I got up and thanked the driveway for its healing And when I have to lie down Before I can get up again The driveway can be The perfect friend It'd be hard to pin down what I look up there to find Have you been lying in your driveway Searching for relief of some kind 
Last night after dinner, I walked outside. I lay down on the driveway and looked up at the sky. I find that song very calming. I wrote it on my ukulele, although I've moved it to the guitar. Um, it, uh, it's really, it's, it's a song that gets me through and I'm learning how to paint at night. I don't know about you guys, but I've been taking up other art to, uh, to get me through. And so I've been painting uh, at night and I'm making little paintings of that song so that I can make a video. That's my hope. You know, in iMovie, you can stick the little, you stick little photos in. So I'm taking pi pictures of my paintings and then I stick them in iMovie and I see if there's enough of them for the song. And you never know, I might just have to start making my own videos. All right, we're gonna go somewhere completely different. Uh, this is uh, 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 one of the, my songs that I call my uh, Despots of History. I have one about uh, Hannibal the Carthaginian crossing the Alps, and this one is about um, Napoleon. And I wrote it because a friend of mine was asking me to write a, uh, a tango for one of his books, Robert Fulgham, an author. He had me write some songs for some of his books, and this was a new book, and he said, would you write a tango for it? And I'd never written a tango, so I said, well, I'll try. And, uh, and that was not the answer he wanted. And he said to me, you know what Napoleon said? If you say you're going to take Vienna, then you take Vienna. Which I thought was this amazingly cool thing to have said. And, you know, Napoleon is, is probably, you know, he, he was a despot. And he had a lot of bad, bad qualities. But he obviously had this can-do attitude that uh, was, at least Robert Fulger was thinking was kind of admirable. And I thought it was pretty cool. Anyway, it started me researching Napoleon. So I spent about 10 years writing this song. And a lot of it was because I wanted the chorus to be, if you say you're going to take Vienna, take Vienna, because I thought that'd be a great sing-along. But it turns out that if you say, take Vienna, take Vienna, you start singing the song with a really bad Italian accent. So I changed it. And now the chorus has a lot more words. It'll be harder to sing along. But I get to use the name of Napoleon's wife, which was also my aunt's name, Josephine. I've always loved the word Josephine. So This is uh, called Napoleon, a musical. Two, three, four. export Napoleon and his empire both were short before the Louvre or Catherine de Neuve there was this man I, he said I will take the end now we sing Waterloo the guillotine the Empress Josephine a little man he has a dream goes and gets a big machine then Wellington comes on the scene has a better sailing team sends our little off to Elba. He took Italy, Spain, and Prussia, which is Germany and Poland now, but it sounds like Russia. You won't find Prussia on a map of Europe anymore. It was an empire that failed. What should we learn about that for? We sing Waterloo, the guillotine, the Empress Josephine, the little man. Machine, then Wellington comes on the scene, has a better sailing team, sends our little fiend off to Elba. He knew how to set a goal and say, I think I can, which doesn't sound French, but he was Corsican. So when you lose the game, don't sit on the bench. Napoleon ruled France, he wasn't even French. We sing Waterloo, the guillotine. Josephine, a little man, he has a dream, goes and gets a big machine, then Wellington comes on the scene, has a better sailing team, sends our little fiend off to Elba. In his coffin, inside his French cut suit, his body, they say, was missing the manly root. It was embalmed and we could stick it back on, but who could tell? Cause by now the rest of him is missing as well. We sing Waterloo, the guillotine. The Empress Josephine, the little man, he has a dream. Goes and gets a big machine. Then Wellington comes on the scene. Has a better sailing team. Sends our little fiend off to Elba. Everybody sing along. Sends our little fiend 
So uh, I didn't mention that the last verse was inspired by an article in The New Yorker, and in case you didn't quite catch all the words, the article was about the fact that Nicole, Napoleon's corpse, uh, they cut off the, um, the manly bits, the wedding tackle, uh, and the article was all about, and it had been embalmed, and the article was about the fact that, you know, where was this missing part of Napoleon, and if you had it, how would you be able to identify it? It was a very long article, and when I've sung that song in various places, I think I was, I can't remember where he was, maybe New Jersey. Somebody came up to me and he said, and they said, you know, somebody on eBay claims they have that piece. I don't know if it's true. Uh, this is a song I wrote about living in Moab. Uh, so I lived for 20 years out in Moab, Utah. Um, I loved it. In fact, Charlie's hat here is the Moab Folk Camp. It's a, it's a music camp that um, I've been running in Moab since 2008. If you're a songwriter and you ever want to come to Moab in the fall, We'll probably be having it again in 2021. We'll be having it this fall because of the pandemic. But So uh, when I was moving back here, because I met Charlie, I moved back to Boston area. And I, um, I had a number of cats that I needed to find homes for. I was planning to bring this little cat with me home, back here. I was going to bring her on the airplane. I looked up. Uh, I had a little cat named Skip. And I'd raised Skip since she was a kitten, although she was feral. So I actually hadn't raised her. I, I, the first time I was able to get my hands on her was probably when she's four or five months old. My previous partner and I had obtained her. Uh, but she was part feral, and uh, I wanted to bring her with me. She's a little cat. And I looked up the on Southwest Airlines, you can bring a cat on an airplane if she's under nine pounds. And Skip was definitely under nine pounds. And I got her the right shots and everything. And uh, the only thing I forgot to do was to consult Skip about whether or not she was going to be willing to live in a cat carrier for many hours at a time. And so what happened was uh, Charlie and I got a cat carrier and we put her in the cat carrier one day to see what would happen. And I put her next to me and I decided I would do yoga. I laid my yoga mat out and I would do yoga next to the little cat in the cat carrier. And um, Skip was not going to stay in that cat carrier at all quietly. And after yeah. about an hour of me trying to do yoga next to a yowling cat, as Charlie says, I had, I had two feral animals. In house. <laughs> we realized that Skip was not going to come with us. So I found a home for her for just a little bit of time. I, I, thought it would, I thought I found a permanent home for her, but what happened was in the winter when I was living in Boston, I got a call from one of my old neighbors saying, you know, your little cat Skip is living wild behind your house eating out of the trash. And I was just heartbroken because I loved this little cat and I needed to find her a home. And I started calling everybody in Moab saying, would you take my cat? But everybody in Moab already had a part for old cat they were feeding and nobody called me back. And one morning I was just distraught and I woke up that day and I thought, you know, my songwriting is going to have to do a job. It's going to have to make somebody want my cat, Skip. So I wrote this song. And that night I stuck it up on Facebook and on YouTube. And I put it up there. And if you, if you find the old video, I think it's still on my YouTube channel. You can tell I've been crying all day because as I wrote this song, I was just weeping. And I'm still kind of reading the words, you can tell. So I put it up on YouTube that night. And with the very practical title, it said, Skip the Cat Needs a Home. Skip needs a home, she's an independent girl. She had a rough start, and it's not a fair world. It's cold tonight and she is on her own. I need to find her a home. So do you have a barn? And roam in your heart, she'll move in if you give her some time. She has a good heart inside her, my little survivor. Three-legged cat in a four-legged world. Do you have a home for my little girl? Seven years ago, she appeared behind the shed in the neighbor's yard. Sleeping under cover, the color of the autumn leaves, the size of my hand. And we don't know how it happened. It might have been a trap or the mouth of a coyote. Got one foot on that cat. Somehow it happened. And somehow she's still alive. 
life Skip knows how to survive So do you have a bar? And roam in your heart She'll move in if you give her some time She has a good heart inside her My little survivor Three-legged cat in a four-legged world Do you have a home for my little girl? Cause she's still half wild and she's just part tame Watch her run across the yard and you'll understand her name She'll move in if you give her some time She has a good heart inside her My little survivor Three-legged cat in a four-legged world Do you have a home for my little girl? Do you have a home for my little girl? So the good news is that um, I put the, the video up on YouTube that night and the next morning I had three offers on Skip. And one of them was the, was the household that I really was hoping would make an offer on Skip because uh, they were nice people. You, you're racing I just, No, this is, this is meant to be, my hands are a little arthritic, but it's meant to be that, you know, that, that sign you make? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah the good sign. Great. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Was, it was It was great. really good. We had few, we didn't have so many tears in the house. <laughs> Endless, you know, nights, of course. <laughs> Weeping all night. Weeping over Skip. I love Skip. Skip is like my, um, she's my, she, she was my, um, like my role model when I, I had this long-term relationship and I was becoming single and Skip was living with me and I watched Skip and, you know, she'd had three legs since I'd met her. When she first showed up, she had a little stub and it, and it, it bled, but we had to have the rest of the leg removed and she, she put up with all of this and Skip knew to take the world on. If, if another cat came in the yard that Skip didn't like, Skip went right on the offensive. She's like... This is my yard. And she was a tiny little cat with three legs. So I really thought of her as my role model. It's like, if Skip can get through, so can I. So I really wanted her to have a good home. And whenever anything goes wrong in the world, uh, I still can say to myself, you know, but Skip has a home. It's, it's okay. It, it, everything isn't perfect, but I've helped one creature in this world. And I, I don't know about you guys, but that makes a difference to me. If I think I've helped somebody, it really makes my day feel better. And in fact, that's why we do our live shows on Facebook on Tuesday mornings. It's just because we have people talk to us. I thought that the live part of of streaming would bother me because people chat, you know? Turns out that's the best way to know people are there. So anyway, those those Tuesday mornings, if you check out our Facebook page, um, Cozy Sheridan, you can see that we do a live show on Tuesday mornings at 1030. So Charlie, let's play the other song about Moab, which was out. So when I'm living in Moab for many years, I always needed house sitters because I had these cats. And one year I had a house sitter named Juliet. And Juliet was this absolutely beautiful young woman. She was probably 21 at the time, and I was not, by the way. And every time Juliet showed up to house it for me, she would have a new tattoo or a new piece of jewelry sort of embedded about her person somewhere. And everything looked great on Juliet. She was gorgeous. And I would look at some of these things and I would think, I wonder if I should do that. Maybe I would look like that. And I was about to have a birthday and it was like a significant birthday. Maybe it was my 30th birthday. I don't know. And I was thinking about whether or not I would pierce my navel because um, I've been looking at Juliet. And around the same time, Juliet left her nose ring on the back of our toilet when she moved out one time. And I'd never seen the back of a nose ring, and so I'm picking this thing up, and it looks like a little tiny corkscrew. Yeah, I don't have children, so I've never had, you know, the whole piercing thing really be something I've had a lot of familiarity with. So there was, um, there was Juliet's nose ring, and I wrote this song. <clears throat> Whoops. Some people look sexy and... F oh, I forgot to tell you this. So, so I'm thinking about getting my, my navel pierced. And... Uh, at the time, uh, if I pierce my navel, it's not going to look anywhere near like anyone else's. And um, if for any reason you ever thought of piercing your navel or your nose or anything, and like me, you made the following decision, which is not in this lifetime. I am your mascot, and this is your fight song. That's what I wanted to tell them. Some people look sexy and fierce when they are multiply pierced. I must be getting too old All I can think is how would I get that In and out of my nose Some people can look nice With all my 
metallic device coming out of their face in an unusual place and there are problems too with colorful tattoos they look nice on young skin with healthy collagen but gravity could be sad We have so much enjoyed being part of Unity Hall's series here. We want to thank Matt again for having us. These art centers are such a gift to our country, so we really enjoy this. Thank you so much. And, and to have somewhere to perform, you know, during this pandemic, to have this series is really, it's pretty, it's pretty much a gift for us, so thank you very much. So we're going to sing you one more song. This is a song I wrote in 2017. Uh, when I moved out here in 2014, Charlie lived in this house on his own, and we're in a town in the Boston Beltway that's kind of urban. And between this house and the house next to us are two driveways, our driveway and their driveway and then their house. They can, we could watch movie, you know, TV in their living room and they could watch the TV in our living room. But when I moved in, the house was empty, and it was empty for almost a year when I lived here. Somebody bought it and they were fixing it up because they wanted to rent it, but it was empty. And, you know, you get used to living next to an empty house, it kind of feels like an extension of your yard. And then about a year after I moved in here, uh, Charlie and I were talking on the phone. I was on the road somewhere and I called him up. I said, how's it going? He said, good. Uh, a couple looked at the house next door today. They're going to think about renting it. He said, they're, uh, they're both divorced and they've just recently gotten together as a couple and between them, they have five teenagers. And I said, oh, wow. And I said, you know that driveway we were thinking about putting up between our I mean, the, the fence we were thinking about putting up between our driveways. I said, maybe we should put that up. Uh, just in case, you know, five teenagers could be loud. And we did, we put up the fence. Because uh, a friend of mine was saying, you know, you can't put it up once they move in. You've got to decide to do it now. So uh, we put up this fence and this very nice couple moves in and there's a fence now between our driveways. I mean, it ends, you know, you can, we can still talk to each other across the driveway, but it goes through the house, through, in the housing part. And then there's the driveway, you know, that goes out to the street. That part we can talk over. So we go over to meet them and I'm, I'm the nice lady next door coming over to say hi and they're the lovely couple that's moved in and none of us talk about the fence that's now there that didn't used to be there when they looked at the house. And uh, they're really nice people. We get to know them over the next year or so and I'm able to sort of see into their backyard because in my bedroom window I can look down into their, into their driveway like Gladys Kravitz, you know, I'm bewitched looking through the curtains. And I watch this lovely woman with her kids, and she's a really good mom. I can see her playing games in the driveway. I see her driving them to school, and I can tell these are really nice people. And I, I start to get to know them a little bit. You know, we talk a bit, but both of us are, you know, we're both, all, all four of us are kind of shy people, so we kind of stay out of each other's business. But we start to talk a little bit, and I go downtown, and the, the woman of the couple has a resale shop downtown, and I go down and I shop in it. And that's how we kind of get to know each other a little bit. I talk to her there. <laughs> But we're not, you know, we're not making a lot of headway on this. We're just kind of friendly neighbors for a while. And then in the winter of 2017, when our country starts to become so divisive and it kind of becomes frightening, um, not knowing what's going to happen, I'm really wishing I knew my neighbor better and then I could just go over and have a cup of coffee at her table. And so uh, I wrote this one morning. This is called My Fence and My Neighbor. first moved in I'm the one who built the fence I'm the kind who can hold out her hand if I know my line of defense we are living in interesting times the 
sky falls every day And I used to think my fence Could make the world go away But this morning all I know Is I don't want to fall down and cry This morning I don't need my fence I need my neighbor on the other side I've seen my neighbor with her children in the morning Driving them to school I've seen her play a game in the driveway She knows how to set and bend a rule And I don't know that much about her But I dropped in and we talked at her store And each time I come away Wanting to know a little bit more And this morning all I know Is I want to fall down and cry And this morning I don't need my fence I need my neighbor on the other side protest and I'm the last one with a sign and I mostly want to be left in peace to make my pretty designs and I don't know from trade agreements and I don't understand all I hear but I wasn't certain when the neighbors moved in Now I am glad they are here And this morning all I know Is I want to fall down and cry This morning I don't need my fence I need my neighbor on the other side. You know, after I wrote the song and I've been performing it for a while, I decided that maybe we should make a video. So my first really kind of our first adult video we made was of this song and I called my neighbor up and I said to her, you know, I wrote this song about you and I've been singing it around the country and here it is. So I sent her it to her. And then, um, and then I said, and I'm going to make a video. and. I'd love it if you'd be in it. I could use another woman, but I'd rather it was you. So anyway, if you look at on YouTube, there's a video of this song, and you can see her coming out of her house and me rolling my trash can down the driveway in the video, and that's her. That's Rachel. Um, thank you all so much for listening to us and for being with us tonight. We were really glad to be part of Unity Hall's series. Yeah. We want to thank Matt again for having us. Uh, we hope that you have a safe fall. Uh, we hope you enjoy the rest of the series. I'm certain that Matt has great acts for, lined up for you, and it's a great way to spend your time in the pandemic supporting the arts.